All right, guys, we're going to start by talking about uh, test crosses. So we're going to describe what they are. And from there, we're going to go into dihybrid crosses. Um, and with those dihybrid crosses, we'll be able to think about genotype and phenotype ratios. Okay. Up first, I want us to think about a, um, an experiment where we have two plants um, of different phenotypes. So a plant that only makes green seeds and a plant that only makes red, I'm sorry, yellow seeds. Um, we know what the genotype of the green plant is, but we're not, we can't be sure what the genotype of the yellow seeded plant is. So take a minute and think about um, what the genotypes would be for those two plants. Um, go ahead and pause and, and determine those genotypes. So I hope that you determined that the genotype of the green seeded plant would be little y, little y, because that's the homozygous recessive um, Green is a homozygous recessive phenotype, and little y, little y is the homozygous recessive genotype. And yellow plants we know could be big Y, big Y, or they might be big Y, little y, um, but we know they have at least one dominant Y uh, because, because they're yellow. Um, we could simplify this and just say the genotype of this yellow plant is Y bar. But what I'd like for us to do is um, figure out a strategy to determine which genotype uh, these yellow plants actually have. So take a minute, pause again, and think about what would a good experiment be to help us determine the color or the genotype of the yellow colored plants. Well, we can look at this diagram here to sort of summarize um, a strategy. And the strategy that I would recommend is a test cross. So in a test cross, we're taking a homozygous recessive individual, in this case, little y, little y. Um, and this individual is usually called the tester. And often that tester is male. It doesn't have to be male, but that's often how it's done. And then we have the unknown individual who has the dominant phenotype, but we don't know whether they're homozygous or heterozygous for a genotype. So if the individual is big Y, big Y, if they're homozygous dominant, then all uh, offspring from, their, from a cross with this tester individual who can only provide little Y gametes all individuals from that cross should be yellow because they'll all have the genotype big Y, little Y. They'll all be heterozygous. So we can know that that second allele is a big Y. The other option is if the offspring, uh, or rather if the yellow parent is heterozygous, um, we can predict that the offspring would be about 50% green. So 50% yellow and 50% green. Um, and that 50% green, or at least any green offspring in this cross, will be a signifier that there was a little y in the genotype of our parent. And so they must be heterozygous and not homozygous dominant. So a test cross is a really common strategy that we use to figure out what is the genotype of a dominant parent? Terrific. Now, so we've thought about a single gene. Let's think about multiple genes here. We've got a gene for seed color, um, where big Y is yellow and little Y is green, just like we just talked about. And then also seed texture, big R for round or little r for wrinkled. So I want you to take a minute and think about what would be the gametes that each of these two parents could produce. And then also um, from that, what would be the F1 genotype and the F1 phenotype of offspring from this cross? So take a minute, pause, and solve those questions. Now that you've thought about that, I hope that you concluded that the homozygous dominant parent 
would only be able to produce big Y, big R gametes. Each gamete is going to have both genes in it, a Y and an R. And then the homozygous recessive parent would only be able to produce little y, little r gametes. But again, both all gametes would have both genes in them. Okay, So we can draw out with those gametes our simplified pi square. So from one parent, we get y, r, and y, r. And from the other parent, we get little y, little r, and little y, little r. So all the offspring from this cross are going to be heterozygous for both genes. The F1 genotype then is big Y, little y, big R, little r, and the phenotype will be yellow and round. They have at least one dominant allele for both, so they'll have a dominant phenotype. If we consider now not the parental cross, but the F1 cross, where we're taking these heterozygous individuals and crossing them together, it's important to note that Y and R are inherited independently. That is, uh, your genotype for Y does not determine your genotype for R. So if we cross two F1 individuals together, take a minute to solve what type of genotypes will you see in the next generation, in the F2? What type of genotypes and also what type of phenotypes? So think about that for a moment and then we'll draw it out. The important thing to think about when we're looking at this F1 cross, big Y, little Y, big R, little R, times big Y, little I, big R, little R, is that each parent can show uh, four different types of gametes. They can make a big R, big Y gamete. They can make a big R, little R gamete. Sorry, that's a big Y, little R gamete. A little Y, big R gamete. And a little Y, little R gamete. And each parent can make this same set of gametes. So let's go ahead and draw a Punnett square using those four gametes. I want to make it really big because I'm going to draw it all out. So I'll just put this little y, little r right there, little y, little r right here. Over here we need a big y, big r, big y, big r, big y, little r, little y, big r. So I'm writing the same gametes on each side of my Punnett square because both parents from this cross have the same genotype, so they'll make the same offspring. An interesting thing to note about these parents is because we have two genes and they're heterozygous for both, this is a dihybrid cross. A dihybrid cross. Di for two, we're caring about two genes, and hybrid referring to them being heterozygous. So they're heterozygous at two genes, a dihybrid cross. So as we fill out the Punnett square for this dihybrid cross, I want you to know that this is not a Punnett square that you should ever have to draw again. This Punnett square is something you should just have in your wheelhouse, but never need to use on an exam. It's a waste of time for you to draw out this whole Punnett square. So we'll think of some ways for you to use probabilities to avoid having to draw this Punnett square. Um, but I'll draw it for your enjoyment. Two little y's, big R. And then my last row here. And finally. All right, so the first thing I'd like us to think about are the different types of phenotype that we could possibly have. We could have yellow round. We could have yellow wrinkled. We could have green round. And we can have green wrinkled. Those are the four possible uh, phenotypes that we can have from this cross because uh, there are different um, possible traits. 
Now let's also think about the genotype that would go around with these. Green, wrinkled, both of these are the recessive phenotypes. That means for both traits, we need to have the recessive genotype. Well, if green is recessive, then we know that this individual, the green round individuals are also gonna be recessive for Y, but round is the dominant phenotype um, for seed shape. So let's call this at least one big R needs to be present. Um, little y, little y, big R. Then for yellow wrinkled individuals, we need at least one big Y, but homozygous recessive for R. And yellow round individuals are gonna have at least one copy of Y and at least one copy of big R. So there's all of our four different genotypes that we're gonna be considering. Let's find those genotype categories in this Punnett square. So first of all, I'm gonna look for big Y, big R, okay? All of these are going to be yellow and round. Am I missing any? I think I've got them all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. There's nine individuals there. What about for yellow and wrinkled? Big Y, little r. Right there, we've got three of them. Uh, green, round, little y, big r. We've got three of those guys. And last but not least, green and wrinkled, there's only one. So of the 16 possible offspring in this cross, we have nine that have the homozygous dominant phenotype for both, three that have one of the homozygous dominant phenotypes uh, and one recessive phenotype, three that have the other recessive phenotype and the other dominant trait, and only one individual that has the double recessive phenotype. Very cool. So anytime you're doing a dye hybrid cross, you should expect to see a nine to three to three to one ratio with the dominant phenotypes being most common and the recessive phenotypes being the rarest. And that's what we have here. So nine to three to three to one from a dye hybrid cross is something you should always be on the lookout for. The last thing I'd like to point out is that the law of independent assortment is only something we can really see when we're looking at a dihybrid cross or a cross that has even more than two genes. So in this case, our Y and R genes are inherited independently. That means that, for example, on chromosome one, maybe we have a big Y or a little y, and on chromosome three we have a big R or a little r, but it doesn't matter uh, whether you have the big Y, big Y genotype, R is gonna be inherited independently of um, the Y genotype. So let's look over here at the gametes. So that tells us we're looking at meiosis here. So in meiosis, we can get, um, the red chromosome one, that's gonna give us a big Y. And here we have the red chromosome three, that gives us a big R. Here we've got the big Y, but the little R, the blue chromosome three. Um, we've got big Y and little R here. We've got little Y and big R. Oh, I skipped over little Y and big R here. Big Y, big R, little Y, little R. So each combination, big Y, big R, little y, big R, big Y, little R, little Y, little R. Each of these combinations are equally likely because the genes are inherited um, on the chromosomes independently from one another, and that's a really important concept. All right, join me again for another video about probabilities.